Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. Today, we're going to make, out of pallet wood, we're going to make this little wine carrier. So, if you're one of the people who makes their own wine, and you're using cardboard boxes or something else, some way of storing your wine, this is a great way of um, carrying them around, moving them. Um, sometimes you do it in a wine store and, and bring them home. This is a perfect way of transporting your wine bottles around. And, in this case, I used some pallet wood to give it some character so that it really gives that sort of uh, authenticity of, a, of an old looking wine case. So, stick around and see how we make this pallet wood wine carrier. To get started on this, I had to figure out some dimensions so I've set out a representation of bottles along here, and it looks like 15 inches long, 11 inches wide, and 13 inches high is the number that I'm going to be working with. So the first thing I need to do is to cut up the sides, because we're going to need to glue those together. So we'll go over to the table saw and do that. Now before we start getting cutting on the table saw, I wanted to show you the blade that I have installed here. Uh, and I already have it installed. I'm using a circular saw, seven and a quarter inch, and actually this is a 24 tooth blade. But this is a 5 8 arbor, the same as my table saw. And the reason I'm using a circular saw blade in my table saw, a couple of reasons. The first one is, this pallet wood is pretty nasty stuff. It's got little rocks embedded in it. Often there's nails. And I don't want to ruin one of my good 10-inch blades by cutting into pallet wood and making it dull or chipping a blade or, or worse. So I'm using a little less expensive 7 and a quarter inch blade. The other reason I'm using this blade is that it has a very thin kerf. It's less than a sixteenth of an inch. And when I come to the point where I'm going to be splitting this wood down the middle, it'll give me a lot more wood because it's such a thin kerf. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the end of each board to make sure it's straight. Then I have a stop back here that's exactly 13 inches, so I don't have to re-measure each time. And I can actually use the fence as a guide and then make sure I get all of the pieces exactly the same length. The kickback pawls are jamming with the little pieces of wood, so uh, I'm going to, going to give you a little bit better view. I'm going to have to take this guard off because it's catching on the wood, uh, and that's not safe either, so uh, we'll fix that up and get back. While we were trimming up all of those 13 inch long boards, I knew that I needed some that were 15 inches long as well. And these are the 15 inch ones, so I'm going to start off with these. And I'm going to rip each one of them because I need to have at least one flat edge. Because remember, we're going to be cutting them in half, so I want to have one edge that's, that's absolutely flat. So I'm just going to go through and run through all of these so we have consistent sizes and a nice flat edge on one side. Thank you. 
Now with all of these 15 inch long boards that I've just ripped the edges off, now I need to cut them in half because then we're going to be ripping them down the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and just rip all of these and then when we come back we'll show you how to set up to do the ripping down the middle. Okay, now if my calculations are right, these pieces that we just ripped, they should be, they are, just barely above the blade. So that's good. We'll go ahead and now set this up for ripping. Now I have one of my measuring blocks and most of this wood that I'm working with is three quarters of an inch. So if I put a line on there, the other side should be, yeah they're, yeah, they're just about right on. So with this, with my measuring block, now this is a three-eighths measuring block. So half of three-quarters, of course you just double the bottom number, half of three-quarters is three-eighths, and this is a three-eighths bar. So all I need to do is set that at the middle, I'm just eyeballing it from above here, to the middle of that blade, and that should be... And that looks pretty close. Let's run one through and have a look and see what it looks like. So here's exactly why I didn't want to use my bandsaw, is because I ran through nails there, I ran through nails on that one, there's nails on that, and there's nails there, and you can see on all of those. Now this is why I love using these blades. I'm going to show you a close up of this blade, and we'll check all of the teeth, but I'll bet you all of the teeth are still there and still fine, but let's have a look. Okay, I just ran through all of those nails and there's all of the teeth. Let's put a mark on there so we don't keep going through. So there's all of the teeth and they're all fine. There isn't a tooth missing. That's what I love about these Freud, these little Freud Diablo blades. You can run through nails with them. I, I don't recommend it, but if you inadvertently hit one, in most cases, um, and there's our mark, uh, the blade will, uh, will survive uh, some nail hits. Back at the workbench, and there's the pieces that we've cut up. This will be one of our ends, and I have the other one set up over here. I'll glue that one uh, after we've done this one. But I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to do anything fancy with this. I'm just going to glue these boards together, and they're, I've, we've trimmed them so that when we put them all together, they're exactly 11 inches this way and 13 this way. So uh, nothing fancy here. I'm just going to glue all of these edges and not using biscuits or uh, anything at all just this is a, a rough a rough project and we're going to treat it like a rough project The next part I want to do is put a piece of wood across here that's going to be both a foot and a bottom and we'll show you what we're going to do with that. Now here's my gable end and I've got a little bit of a flaw. If you look there you can see that there's a little bit of an indentation there which means this board is thinner on this side than it is on this side but you know what I really wanted to keep this knot in here so I went ahead and used this board. I knew when I was gluing it up that there was this discrepancy so I've just made a little piece of wood that fits in here and I've got from one of the cutoffs, I have this spacer, and what I want to do now is I'm going to glue and 
uh, air nail this little piece on here so it will be both the bottom of our rack and it will also work as the feet of this because I want the feet to be lifted off. So all I need to do now is put some glue on here and I'm going to glue this little piece on both sides as well. There we go. And we'll put the spacer in there so that I know where it's going to go. And I'll just put one tack there. And another one at that side. There we go. We'll just tack that all the way along. Now, the the only reason on this in this case for the air nails is to that I can keep on working with this now while the glue continues to set and dry I can continue to work on this. The next thing I need to do now with this is I'll finish the other, I've got the other gable here, I'll do that off camera but the next thing we want to do is we want to put a, a hand hold in here so I'm going to go over to the drill press and we'll drill a couple holes. Now I've marked both of these holes so and I've installed a one inch bit in there, so we'll just go ahead and drill those holes. And now with my jigsaw, I just want to cut those two lines across so that we open that up. Now because this is a handhold, I just want to ease the edges, so I'm going to use my little hand router with a roundover bit in it. Before we complete the final assembly, we need to figure out how the bottles are going to be separated. Now I want mine to be removable, so what I've done is I've got a piece of scrap plywood. Uh, I know it's not a pallet, but uh, it's still scrap. And I've located, you can see some lines down here, I've located where the bottles will lie. And what I'm going to do is just tack this. And that's going right through. And that's all I'll need to do to keep those bottles separated. Now the next thing I want to show you is my assembly jig. And I'm going to make multiple numbers of these little um, carrying racks. So I want them all to be exactly the same. And you'll see why towards the end. But I've, I've just put this on my Verispin so you can see what it looks like. This is all just scrap wood, and that's exactly what it is. It, so what you can see, so you can see in the front, 
I just drilled them straight through into the block. And you can see that I used scrap wood there. But in the back, I used pocket holes. And you can see the pocket holes down there. And I used a pocket hole on the inside. You can see that one. And you can see that one. So that's how I fastened this down. Because I want this to be rigid and non-movable. Well, let's do some final assembly here. This uh, pallet wood that I got was pretty wet when I got it. I didn't realize how wet it was. It's, uh, you can see that it's uh, warped quite a bit, but uh, we'll do the best we can with it. And remember, it's just pallets. Now to do the sides, all we have to do is flip it on its side. And I picked the ugliest, dirtiest pieces of wood for the sides so that it does stand out. And again we're going to glue. Well, I think I've done all the measuring. We'll soon see. We'll put a bunch of empty bottles in here and see if the spacers work properly. Hopefully none of the bottles will touch once we get the spacers in. There we go. That's perfect. Now, one of the nice things with this design is that you can take it and turn it on its side. I'm just going to use this to, because uh, it's nice to tilt them up a bit. But now you've got not only a place for carrying wine, now you've got a wine rack. But the reason I told you earlier, I said, I'll show you something later on. While I was doing this, I actually made a second one. And the reason I made the feet the way I did is because now you can stack these and they'll stay nice and firm. So if you want, you can carry all sorts of different things in this or you can carry your wine and you can make a wine rack out of it. And that's the pallet wood carrying wine rack. Well, that concludes our video on making the little wine rack and wine carrier. If you're one of the people that makes their own wine and you're looking for a place to store your bottles and keep them from crashing around together, not only is this a great system, you can actually stack it. And if you use a little bit of glue like I did, uh, it's amazing how strong and sturdy these things will last you for years and years. So, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to us, we ask you to subscribe to our channel. We ask you to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and don't forget, there will be an article on this on Woodwork Web. And we always put underneath this video, there's a, it says, a full article here. And you can just click that and go right to Woodwork Web and it'll give you all the details. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.